Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see how to configure TempDB and the causes of not configuring the TempDB, what will be the impact and how it is going to impact the performance that we are going to cover up in this video. Okay, so let's start. So TempDB configuration. So there is a possibility that when we are installing the new SQL server, so we observe that by default only one mdf file is one mdf file is created and auto growth is uh, 64 mb so it is going to impact the performance so we are going to see what is the best practice to configure the new server also there is a possibility that there are the existing servers and not configured as per the standard so we are going to cover up all these uh, details and we are going to talk in details how to configure and what are the causes and impact will happen if it is not configured okay so we need to understand what goes in temp tv so we can see that whenever any object is created like hash tables or any table variables if any courses are created joins aggregation sorting indexing hash matches table is false index is false and version is stored so these are the main causes which impact the temp db and that uses the temp db so we have the system databases and also the temp db plays a very important role so as we know other user databases when we connect then only it is accessible and we perform the insert update or delete operations but tempdb the only databases which works 24 by 7 like whatever the drops inserts are happening for seconds we can see that thousands of transactions keeps on going in the tempdb so that is the reason we need to configure the tempdb properly so let's see okay so here we can see that uh, uh, when the drop when any object is dropped or created so it it uh, updates the page free space that is the system pages so say for example if any inserts are going on and it needs to allocate the data files so it will check in the pfs that the page is available for allocation or not again it checks the shared global allocation maps and means where that pages are located and based on that it allocates the pages so what happens if there is a single file in the tempdb so each and every time it has to go to the pfs and sgm for allocating the pages and it keeps the light weight you know locks on the pages so let us protect these pages in memory and keep some locks so that it keeps on happening so if it is not configured to uh, you know as per the standard then we may face you know the performance issues so here you can see that if it is only one uh, data file is created then it will keep on going again and again to the pface file for the page allocations and the shared global location to find where the page is located but if it is allocated to eight data files and it keeps on growing equally so it has the eight pfs files to check and sgms and it can it can provide the pages you know to the as per the requirement to the sql server and by that way the performance becomes becomes better also we can see the commands like uh, if you run the command select star from c star dm os wait states there also we can see that base io ledge is waiting for something and it keeps the lock okay so this is how it works so let's move to the next slide okay so we can see that these are the configuration recommendations so 
basically we when we create the uh, sql server so this is the basic you know the understanding that what should be the temp db configuration how much will be the temp db data files and what should be the initial file size and what should be the auto growth okay so as per the microsoft suggestions they recommend that per cpu there should be a uh, one data files okay but by default it is one temp one data file and uh, auto growth is 64 mb okay so it is recommended that uh, minimum at least we should start with 4 to 8 temp db files okay depending upon the course and uh, means minimum it is good to have the 8 temp db files and if we are still facing the problems then we can keep on increasing the temp db data files sometimes we don't know that what should be the initial file size of the data files so if you are not sure then we can go to the 25 percent of this disk space we can allocate to the temp db as initial size or it is recommended that we can keep at least 60 percent of the disk size as an initial size for the temp db files and we have to equally size the temp db data files it should not be we are allocating the 10 gb for one data files and 20 gb for another so again it will hit the performance so it is recommended to keep the equal size for all the data files also if we are using the sql server uh, less version or before the 2016 then we should enable the trace flag triple one seven and also triple one eight so basically what it does is it increases all the data files equally so say for example if there is a requirement for the 500 or 800 mb then it will increase 100, 100 mb for all the eight data files so it keeps the same growth for all the data files that's why we have the 1117 traceflex to be enabled before the 2016 again we have the traceflex 1118 so it means that it will not be checking where the space is available in SGM and BFS so straight forward it will allocate a new pages for that so but by default in 2016 and onwards these two trace flex 1117 and 111 is by default it is enabled same it can be done for the user databases as well so now the seventh step is leave auto growth on by 512 mb so it is good to have keep the auto growth enabled at least minimum 512 mb so that we do not come into the situations like there is no space on the uh, temp db drive also we should not be shrinking the data files because what happens is when indexing or some other kind of maintenance activities goes on and if we once it is completed and we shrink the data files then we get the space but again when the indexing job will be running again it will grow and it will take a longer time so it is better not to shrink the data files instead if any uh, jobs or any queries are taking longer time then better to tune it then we have the instant file initialization you can see how to enable instant file initialization while installing the sql server you can check in my previous video like how to install sql server uh, 2019 I have explained that so instant file initialization is the assigning the pages to the SQL server becomes faster so I will create another video on in details what is instant file initialization and how we can enable it yep. the last one is keep database in different drives so it is recommended that we should always keep the data in a different drive and also we can choose for the uh, high IOPS uh, uh, drive for the uh, temp DB because we do not bother about the data loss because as we know whenever the data file whenever the SQL server is restarted the new temp DB is created 
so this is about the temp db configuration guys and uh, we can see in sql server okay so here i can see that while creation itself i have assigned the 64 m uh, 512 mb as a initial size and auto growth is 64 mb so that is how it looks like and you can see that all the files are equally sized and auto growth is enabled and there is a dedicated drive for the temp db okay so that's it guys i hope this uh, helps a lot and uh, if you like the video you can subscribe for my channel and like the video thank you thank you guys